About six months ago, I installed a comms rack in my laundry room and started building out my brand new smart home network. Yes, I know that a laundry is a stupid place to put a comms rack given the heat, the humidity, and the vibration, but this is where the previous owners had run all the existing Cat6 audio and alarm cables to, so I didn't really have a choice. A lot of people commented on the video that I made about this home networking setup, and if you've not seen it, you should go check it out on my channel. Most of these comments basically just slagged me off for having terrible cable management, and I didn't really care. But some of the comments were actually constructive and made really good points. I'd never even heard of Keystone Jacks before. Thanks for the tip, James. Well, a lot has happened in the last six months since I recorded that video. I've had some renovations done, during which I had the electricians install some extra Cat6 network outlets into places I might need them in the future. I've added power over Ethernet security cameras, and generally added a bunch more smart home tech to my network. This has meant that my comms rack is now in even more of a state than it was before. I've also run out of space on the existing 24 patch panel that I had originally installed, and the rack is full of dust from all the building work we had done. But that building work is now all finished, and I probably am not going to be installing any more networking equipment for a while, so it's time to finish off this home network build. My partner recently went away for a week on a business trip, giving me the perfect opportunity to take my home network down for a few hours and do some rack upgrades. I bought some power rails to clean up how I powered everything in the rack. One was a normal UK mains plug, and another one has an IEC C14 plug at the end so I can protect certain things from my UPS. I also decided to take James's advice and install a 48 port keystone patch panel so that I could easily move my cabling around and add more in the future. I also bought some extra cable management thingies. In this video, I'm going to show you how I went about pulling apart and reassembling my home network, and I explain why I made the decisions that I did and how I went about implementing to make it look really neat and tidy like this. Let's take a look. The first thing I had to do was pull the rack out of its home and disconnect all the cables. I was actually quite scared that the whole network would pack up and stop working when I pulled it apart and put it back together. It seriously made me anxious. I got nightmares in my head, I fear that the thoughts build up until I can't hear. Once the cabling had all been disconnected, I wheeled the whole rack out into a bigger space so I could work on it a little bit easier later on. Anxiety filling up every space, no privacy. And silently, it could build and build until you finally see. Whoa, it's taking over, damn no closure, moving closer. The first step was to untangle all of the hardwired cabling and disconnect the old patch panel. My punch down tool has this little hook on the back of it which is designed to help you pull the terminated cables out of the patch panel without damaging them too much. My mind fills up into a creature and it haunts me somewhere much deeper. I got nightmares in my head. I fear that the thoughts build up until I can't hear that my mind fills up into a creature and it haunts me somewhere much deeper. I've been feeling weird. I can't seem to focus good enough. Nothing's really clear. Sometimes With the cables all loose, I now wanted to properly bundle them up into a neater cable harness so that they not only looked good, but they didn't get caught up in anything in the future. I bought a hundred of these Velcro cable ties, which I wrapped around the cable harness every 20 centimeters or so. I did the same thing with the second lot of wiring, which entered the room from the other side. Cabling all neat and tidy, it was time to re-terminate the cables into the new keystone jacks that I had bought. Keystone jacks offer a bit more flexibility than a patch panel. With a patch panel, the cable is permanently wired into a specific port, and the only way to change the port it is wired into is to rip all the cables out and re-terminate them, much like you just saw me do. A keystone jack is modular, meaning that you can just unclip it from the panel and clip it back in without having to rewire anything. 
you can also get keystone jacks like I did that don't need any specific tools to terminate them, making them much easier to use for a home network. To wire in a keystone jack, you first need to strip the insulation off your network cable, pull out the individually twisted pairs, and cut out the spine and untwist the wires. The keystone jack comes with many different pieces. The socket, the wiring bit, the cover, and a cable tie. You can see that the wiring bit has colour markings on it, and you need to line up the colours from your network cable with these slots. Feed the network cable through the hole and then slot the corresponding wire into the correctly coloured slot. Make sure that the wire is properly seated in the slot before moving on to the next one. It's a little bit fiddly. Once the wires are all tightly in place, connect on the cable thingy to the little circuits on the socket so that the whole thing becomes a hinge. Check that the wires line up properly with the metal connectors on the socket and then snap it shut. The insulation on the network cable shouldn't be poking out of the back of the socket like mine is, but it is really hard to wire one of these things up when you're trying to keep it in the centre of a camera shot. Now you can thread through the included cable tire to keep it firmly held together. Snip off the long bits of protruding network cable, et voila, you have a terminated keystone jack ready to go. Now I just needed to do another 25 of them. Approximately 10 hours later. I've been feeling weird, I can't seem to focus good enough, nothing's really clear, sometimes... It... This took freaking ages, and an old man like myself really can't handle bending over for that long or sitting on hard concrete floor for hours. I was absolutely shattered by this point and my back was aching. I had a little power nap, but I knew I could not stop here. My whole smart home and computer network were currently offline, and I just needed to push through and get it finished. With the cabling all done, I got back to the comms rack and pulled the remaining equipment out of it. I unscrewed the router and gave the whole thing a solid cleaning out. Next, I followed James's sensible advice once again and moved the 24 port PoE switch up closer to the patch panel because it was indeed madness to have the cables running over the top of the router like that. I then installed another cable management so that I could hide away the cables that connected into the bottom of the switch or into the router, and then replace the router below that. Finally, I made sure that my new patch panel fit snugly at the top and that the cage nuts for it were in the right place. With all this rejigging, I'd realized I'd created an annoying half RU gap between the router and the ventilation plate, but I was too tired to bother moving the rack mounted server up a few notches as messing around with server rails is a right pain in the butt. So go on, mock me in the comments for it, I really don't care. The last thing to do was spin the rack around and install the new power distribution rails. Due to a total lack of proper planning, they wouldn't fit horizontally across the back of the rack like I originally had intended. So I just cable tied them vertically along the side of the rack and called it a day. It wasn't perfect, but it was a lot better than what I had going on before. The rack was ready to go into its home. But first, I took the opportunity to vacuum out all the dust from under and behind the rack using the Henry Hoover that my carpenter had left behind. Thanks for letting me borrow your vacuum cleaner, Gaz. fed the newly terminated and cleaned up cabling back into the side of the rack and out the front at the top. Some of the cables were longer than others, so I had to line them up properly so they'd actually reach the patch panel. You 
can now see how easy it is to click these keystone jacks into the panel and you can pull them out and move them around whenever you need to. Even with all my cables connected in, this panel has plenty of spare holes for any future cables that I might want to run. Finally, I screwed it into place, into the rack, and damn, did it look fly. You might be wondering how I know which socket goes into which port on my Switch, given that it was all previously configured into separate VLANs. Well, before I started, I took note of what needed to be plugged into a specific port, but for everything else, I really recommend one of these network cable tracker tools. There are two parts to it, an emitter and a receiver, and they both run on a 9 volt battery. You plug the emitter into the port that you want to trace into your patch panel using a normal network cable and set it to scan. You then take the other end to your patch panel and touch the probe against the metal pins inside each port. When you touch the port that is connected to the emitter, it makes a beeping sound, so you know that this port on your patch panel corresponds to that outlet in your house. It's a fast way to figure out what is what, and this tool also doubles as a cable tester, which is really handy. Anyway, I was on the home straight now, and all I had to do was hook up the cables, tidy them away, and it would be time for that well-earned beer. I plugged my server and internet connection in first, then brought the access points and the cameras online before plugging in the rest and hiding the cables away behind the tidies. I'm actually really pleased with how it all turned out. It looks much better than it did at the start. It's cleaner and much easier to work in if I have to. It also has plenty of extra space for future cabling and extra switches should I need them. This whole thing took seven hours from start to finish, and I was aching for days afterwards from all the crouching and being on my knees. The eagle-eyed amongst you will have noticed that you didn't see me put my Sonos and audio cabling back in. That's because both my camera batteries ran out and I was too tired to do it that same evening. I simply put them back in the next day by feeding them gently into the side. My home network is now finished, and I hope I don't have to do something like that again for a long time. Thank you for making it this far through the video. I hope you found it entertaining and maybe learned something along the way. If you did enjoy it, I'd really appreciate you clicking that like button as it helps me out. And if you're not already, why not subscribe to the channel so that you know when I release a new video, and then together we can make your home smarter.